this video we're going to do the orbital diagram for tin. You may have already watched the one where we do the electron configuration for tin. This will be very similar. We're going to use a diagonal rule again for orbital filling diagram or just orbital diagram. For an orbital diagram, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start at the beginning of the first arrow. We need 50 electrons, um, which means we're going to draw 50 little arrows. So we start out and we go through 1s. Now for this, we're going to draw a little horizontal line that represents the orbital. We're going to put 1s to label it, and we're going to put two arrows to represent the two electrons that are in there. Next, we go through 2s. So again, 2s, two electrons. Next comes 2p. Now for p, that's three little orbitals. I'm going to bracket them together. And those get six electrons, two per orbital. After 2p comes 3s. After 3s, back up here to 3p. After 3p, 4s. After 4s comes 3d. That's five orbitals. Notice that I go and I give each one of them one electron first. I'm following Hun's rule that says that you don't pair up electrons until you have every orbital in that sublevel filled. Okay, we should stop and count what we've got here. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and then 20 more is 30 at this point. So I'm just going to give myself a little note that I've done 30 so far. Next through 4P. with six electrons and next through 5s and after 5s comes 4d and 10 electrons total there we've got to be getting close We were at 30 up here, so it's six more, eight more, so we're at 48 now, so we just need two more. And that's going to take us through into 5P, but not through 5P. And I only need two electrons, and again, don't pair them up, put them separately out like this. In fact, we're going to learn that the reason why 10 acts the way it does is because it's got these two, well, one of the reasons it's got these two unpaired electrons out here. So there's the orbital diagram for 10.